What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Play Legit Podcast. We are your host, Corey Elijah, and my good friend... KJ, man. Yeah. So, brother, yeah, we got to do the fist. It's probably the proper time to have the fist. That's right. Uh, So, uh, welcome back to the Play Legit Podcast, episode number 15. Uh, We are going through these these episodes fairly quickly here, man. It's it's pretty cool. It's been a, a pretty fun ride so far, man. Yeah, speaking of fun rides, man, I heard about you this past weekend. Yeah, man, I've been, uh, as you guys know, as you know, probably based off of my uh, my rants about Skate 4, you know, I, I skateboard, I'm a skateboarder, uh, and there's been a lot going on in the country, you know, um, with everything that had occurred with uh, George Floyd, uh, rest in peace, condolences that go out to his family. Uh, and the friends of George Floyd. Uh, there's demonstrations all over the country. Every state had a demonstration, and each state had multiple demonstrations in different cities. Uh, so here locally, of course, I'm in the fourth largest city in Wisconsin. Um, so of course, there was a gathering here. Um, you know, it was about three days worth of uh, different protests and things going on. Uh, and I decided to just take to the streets or whatever and kind of document the whole thing on my live feed on my Facebook, and uh, a lot of people join into the live. So many people join into the live, in fact, uh, that it's almost, it's gotten to the point where it's almost hard to keep track of everything that's going on. Uh, The videos that I did, they all went, you could say, relatively viral, uh, like 65K plus views. And a lot of it was, a lot of the views were like congregated into my community. Uh, so a lot of those views are people that like are directly in, you know, uh, uh, an area of me where they can touch me, they can see me, uh, they could find me skateboarding down the street if, if they needed to. Uh, and that was happening a lot. It was crazy. A lot of people were coming up, donating money to me, um, just giving me like supplies, water, uh, literally people would just like randomly run up to me and be like, Hey, I saw you coming. I just wanted to give you some water. Uh, it was really cool. It's like, it's one of those experiences that you have where it's like you, you finally kind of like see it's like ultimate realization, like humanity is a great thing. Um, everybody was looking out during the demonstrations. There wasn't too many like conflicts or anything that were going on. Uh, only the first night was there really any damage that happened and it was minimal damage. Uh, and, you know, you say that lightly, but, you know, property owners did have damage to their businesses. Uh, so hopefully, you know, our community is going to stick together and help them get these things repaired and get them back on their feet. Um, but it was a crazy experience. But for the most part, I feel like my city, they showed up, they showed out, they did exactly what they're supposed to do. Um, there was a, an event yesterday that I attended and streamed. Uh, it was called the Neil for Nine. Uh, you know, everybody congregated in, in the park. There were so many different people from all different walks of life. Uh, different races, different, you know, tax brackets, everything. The sheriff was out there. The chief of police was out there. Everybody was together. Uh, Everybody kneeled for the nine minutes. Um, You know, there was a prayer in between, you know, and uh, it was really good energy. You know, it was great energy. Uh, Today so far, it seems like everything was calm. Um, So things seem to be going back to normal. But I just want to shout out everybody in Kenosha, Wisconsin, uh, for, you know, showing me a bunch of love. It's, it's been so insane. I mean, I did an interview today uh, for a local paper called The Happenings Magazine. Uh, Shout out. In the Smart Reader. And, you know, that they posted uh, the, the web article today. The print article is going to come out on Thursday. It crashed their website. People are like, people, uh, people they're just so kind. They're so nice. They're, they love me. Um, and, you know, I love them back. I appreciate all the support from everybody out there. I'm doing another interview tomorrow for our local NPR affiliate. Uh, and then I'm going to be talking to some city officials about some stuff. Um, they're working on trying to get uh, body cams on the sheriff's uh, department out here, too. So they are asking me for some assistance. So I'm going to hear them out, see what they're talking about. Um, but, you know, I definitely got to see what's in the bill or whatever. I can't just co-sign, you know, whatever they decide to throw in there. But as long as it's good, I definitely will support it. Uh, and people in the community, you know, I'm here for you guys. You guys have been hitting me up, hitting me with inbox. I, I definitely appreciate the support. I appreciate everybody that has donated money. Like literally, you guys, I 
never even ask for any money. You guys literally have donated so much money to me. It's, it's honestly, it's crazy. It's overwhelming in a way, uh, but I really appreciate it. I'm going to use all of the funds to help uh, better my equipment here, uh, have better cameras and things. So when I go out and about, I can document stuff for people as well as, you know, have a high quality product for people. Uh, not just live streams, but pre-recorded content that I do as well. You know, the podcast, the Play Legit podcast, O Word with Corey Elijah, all that cool stuff. So thanks, everybody, that's been supporting me. Um, you guys are great. And uh, let's get on into some gaming talk, man. Wait a minute here. I want to say, man, I appreciate everything you're doing, buddy. And when you do good, you get good back. It's just plain and simple, man. You reap what you sow. You're out there doing good things. We didn't get Skate 4, but Corey went ahead and made himself. <laughs> he went ahead and <laughs> brought Skate 4 to the people, man. I'm just hoping uh, maybe I can get enough clout to make it happen, you know? This yeah. is what it, that's what it's all about. I'm doing all of this to get enough clout to make Skate 4 a reality. That's all it is. But it's real cool what you're doing, man. And uh, I just uh, it's just cool to see people taking a stand and, and uh, doing it in a, such a smart way. Because when you're doing it a smart way like that, then you will be heard. We just have heard examples from Corey of just the impact he made. And I know that that's available for anybody out there. You know, we just approach it in a different way, you know. But there's ways to approach it to make that impact, to make that change. And that's what we're trying to do, make that change. That's right, man. And anybody can do it, you know. Um, all it takes is just, you know, one person seeing your feed and then sharing it, and then, you know, the tumbleweed starts to grow. You know, that's what happened with me. This internet stuff, it's like 50% talent, 50% luck. That's just how it goes. Um, and as long as, you you know, you stay on the path, you do things right, and eventually, you know, the, the, the cards are going to fall in your hands. So um, thanks again, everybody. You guys are great. And uh, let's get on with the show, man. So um, Arcade 1UP the throwback future. So there's an NBA jam cabinet uh, that's coming out and we want to talk about that. And we also want to kind of uh, give some ideas of what we'd like to see the company produce. So um, you want to give some thoughts on the uh, NBA jam cabinet? Sure. Just as a follow-up, um, I just wanted to say that it, it will have Wi-Fi, uh, wireless uh, Wi-Fi connection to the internet. So, I mean, that's just really cool to think about a game that old, and really, with Arcade One Up, if they keep doing that with the wireless Wi-Fi, that's going to add new life to these old games that you would have never even thought in a million years. I thought of NFL Blitz. When were you thinking, like, I'm going to be able to play NFL Blitz online with somebody, but on the arcade cabinet? So I'm not telling y'all that that's, a hap that's happening, but I think that if that were to happen, and they could work out the licensing issues and all that because I know NBA Jam won't have everybody because of licensing issues, but they're going to have most of the people. So that's, again, something they'd have to work out with NFL Blitz. But I just was thinking, man, that would be so fun to play online with somebody, but you would literally have the arcade experience because you'd be playing on an arcade cabinet. Mm. Nice. Yeah, that's a good call. I think, yeah, Blitz is a good one. And, you know, they still, they still kind of – like you can still find blitz in arcades like the barcade here in in town where i live we have blitz on there so that's definitely a good one and that's one of one of those competitive games too where it's like you have the cabinet you have people come over you can play but then also you can still play it and play it online and still have a you know that authentic arcade feel playing so that's also that's that's a really good one i like that one um you know, they already have the Ninja Turtle one. So, I mean, that that's what I would be like. I, I want to see that one. But they led with that. And I think they they knew what they were doing when they led with that. You know, the, the Turtles fan base. It's so it's so strong. Like, I still personally am going to eventually pick one up uh, when I have some more space for an arcade cabinet. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but uh, a, another game that I would like to see, I would like, and, you know, this kind of, it's, I'd say it's, kind of more of a newer game, although it's not necessarily a newer game. Uh, it's going to be a classic arcade game that I like, which would kind of bring something new. I think it might make it a little bit more expensive, uh, but I think it would be something cool to see in, for in the form, and that would be Time Crisis. 
Um, that's okay. One of, that's one of those games where, you know, that arcade feel, you get your rifles because, yes, the cabinet is the cabinet is cool with the, you know, with the joystick, the old school retro arcade joystick, right? But if we're looking at future-proofing your, your company and where you can go, you know, you're going to have to be kind of innovative, although it's been done before, not in this form. So I'd like to see a game like Time Crisis be brought. It's, imagine Time Crisis at home on a micro cabinet, but then also being able to play it online with people. You know, I think that would just be a great time. Uh, those game, that game's great. Uh, and, you know, I think it would be something amazing. You know, that's when- You really got me thinking, man. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I used to play Time Crisis in the arcades all the time. And I'm, I mean, literally like Time Crisis, Crisis Zone, the spinoff with the Uzi, um, and also, um, you know, Time Crisis 2 is probably my, it's probably still my favorite in the series. I played three, four, I've played five, you know, five has a pedal on either side. I don't know mm. if you can play that, but yeah, if they could somehow, I don't know if they would combine all of them on the one arcade machine, but that would be freaking cool if they could do that. But I was just going to say that the home arcade versions they've released them and sometimes they have sometimes they do ports i don't think i don't think they've ported all of them but they have those guns that you can buy and that is fun but it's it's just not going to be as good as what you're going for here with getting that pedal and that whole thing it's just that's just going to make it so much better mm -hmm. yeah i think that would be amazing and it's going to give you that feel like because with the pedal and all that, it you feel like you're more immersed in the game. You know, that was one of the things like that. The game is literally was always my go to game. Whenever I would go to the theater before I'd go see my movie, I'd hit the arcade. I play some time crisis after I spent what I thought was too many tokens in there. I might, you know, go play a different game, uh, Jurassic Park or something like that before I hit the movie. But time crisis was a must every single time I play by myself. I play with my brother. I play with a random person. It wouldn't matter. Time Crisis had to go down. So I that that'd be a game like that game. I feel like that game would blow up. I feel like streaming wise, it would do really good, and just uh, getting people to buy the thing, it would do really good. So oh, I almost forgot about Raising Storm. They like ported that to PS3 and put Time Crisis on on it like I think it was just originally called Raising Storm but then when they ported it they're like okay let's also put that branding on there to help right. us you know so <laughs> I guess you can throw that in the family too that's right. a fun game <laughs> for sure but the the whole arcade one up uh the whole theme of it I think it's super cool uh and I can't I can only imagine what we're gonna see in the future from that you know like I said I I like to always kind of think outside the box and in a way and kind of throw a different angle at stuff so like i said i'd love to see them bring the the uh shooting mechanics from time crisis there uh but another game just you know as like a uh honorable mention i would like to see is a classic i mean and they may even be working on this but mortal kombat you know it's just one of those classic arcade games that or street fighter 2 honestly uh, i might honestly i, I might think prefer... that they both have been released bro Okay. All right. I think so. Okay. Cause I haven't, I was look, I was looking into one cause I see these things all the time at like uh Walmart and target. They always have them, but I hadn't seen a street fighter two, but if they have one good, I'm going to look for one. And as soon as I have space for it, I need that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they have one that has like multiple street fighter versions. Oh, okay. Dang. All right. Well, I'm lost in the sauce, but they didn't have online. So what you're saying is for it to have online. That's what you right. said. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's going to, yeah. yeah. Right, with like the updated, with the, the Wi-Fi. The, I'm thinking the way I'm thinking is yes, with the Wi-Fi connectivity to give it, you know, the added bonus to it. Yeah. I think I was uh, completely lost in the sauce of that, but it's all right. It happens. We can't know everything. Yep. There it is. And it's arcade one up. So they got it. Yeah. And, yes, it it. and and it looks really cool like with the print and everything on it so nice all right well dino crisis make that happen at least so uh let's keep things <laughs> let's keep things moving man uh so this is this is going to be a fun one right we all love theme parks right so 
Super Nintendo World theme park. Is it worth the admission? So have you seen any of like, there was the leaked photos um, of like the layout. There's a lot of, ex, you know, explanations, how things are going to work. They have these uh, specialty wristbands that you can use to collect coins and things as you go around the park. But it, it, it appears they're saying it's like an interactive video game world, right? So everything about the park ha is kind of game based. Um, so is there something that in particular that you would like to see there? Like, I know they have goat, like Mario Kart go-karts that are going to be there. Yeah, um, that's a given. The scenery looks really cool. It looks true to uh, Nintendo and the uh, Super Mario Mushroom Kingdom. Uh, I know you, uh, <laughs> you had a question about beer. I was going to say maybe they could do a radish beer. But I don't, oh, know, I don't know how good that would be. I'm thinking like Super Mario. I'm like, well, what could they make a beer out of? Some hipster will, will whip <laughs> up some. <laughs> it's just like rad, there's radishes. Maybe they'll make radish beer. Like, I don't, I don't know. Um, or maybe what I was just... thinking, here's what they do. I'm going to tell you right now. They're going to the, um, a Wario branded whiskey. Wario's whiskey. That's what I'm talking about right there. But uh, what I think would be fun is if they have some type of Wario wear type of uh attraction where it's just random just craziness things coming at you and uh, that's about as much thought, thought as i put into it but i just was I, my main thought was just implementing wario into the park i think would add another layer uh because he's just such a crazy dude and his games are wild right so i think that'd be fun yeah i think that would be pretty cool too um, yeah, I saw some highlights of like they have stuff with Yoshi there. Um, the Mario Kart thing, of course, would be there. I'd like to see some of the um, mini games, maybe an adaptation of some of the mini games from Mario Party. Um, for like just example, like Skateboard Scamper, things like that. Um, there's some of those mini games that I feel like they could actually make a real game and since the the whole the entire park is like an ongoing game where you're collecting coins for i imagine prizes or whatever on your on your wristband that's connected to your smartphone i met, like i feel like that would be kind of the way to go that way you have like other mini games as well as your your main attractions that you can go to so it's always kind of gives people places to go when the large rides i, I imagine they'll have like some big um luigi's mansion ride or something like that there so that could be like their haunted house right you know uh yeah it'd be like their haunted mansion and you people you get in get in and ride and you might have ghosts coming at you in 3d or something like that that could mm -hmm. be fun yeah just like the game you know yeah. the ghosts come up it gets big then it disappears and it gets big again and then it disappears just like in the game so that'd be pretty cool I mean, I feel like they're putting a lot into this. Uh, they were really mad that photos got leaked and then they had them scrubbed off the internet as well as they could. So, I mean, I feel like they're they're putting their all into this whole park. I'm excited to see it like a Nintendo world. Like I'm gonna go regardless just because, I mean, I love Nintendo. So it's one of those things you gotta check it out, man. So I'm pumped to see it. You know, they're gonna have a bunch of merch there. You're gonna be able to get like the exclusive Mario hats there that you'll only be able to get there, the exclusive yeah. t shirts and all that, you know, the branding stuff. You know how how that's gonna go. Here, get this cup for $35 that you can only buy here, but you'll only be able to get here and it has this fancy Nintendo logo. People will buy it. It's gonna happen. How much Ooh. do you think general admission is gonna be for Ooh. an adult? Expensive. 65 bucks a day or something? I'm guessing. Yeah, that sounds about right, actually. About 65 bucks a day? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I was going to say, and I, like, I know it's the uh, Mushroom Kingdom, but if they had, like, a Splatoon area, that would be super sick. Yeah, so I think that eventually that's what you, what's going to happen is this is definitely going to be successful because it's it's mario it's nintendo it's over with the kids and adults alike of course but yeah so this is pretty much you can take this to the bank if this is going to be a success because it's at universal studios and they have a long track record of of quality 
Mm. Um, obviously not, you know, Disney, Disney's on another level, but we could say that with anybody, could put them up against anybody. But right. you, the next best thing you always think of is Universal Studios. And they already, the Harry Potter theme park has been a hit for them. So they know what they're doing is what I'm saying. So, yeah, I think that it's going to be good. And what you will see, I believe, down the line is expansions to it. I'm, I'm thinking in my head, I'm already thinking about F-Zero. And I'm thinking about Star Fox. I'm thinking about uh, Earthbound. I'm thinking about Metroid. Just different things that they're going to just slowly kind of integrate in. But right now, I think they're going to keep that focus on the Mario. Mm, Donkey Kong Country. Like, there's so much yeah. There's so much that they can do. They have so many iconic properties that they could just roll out. You know, they could even use some Noosa arms. Like, you know, all of that stuff, I think, would work if they slowly but surely roll it out. Honestly, Nintendo could probably take over the entire park. Of course, like, the Harry Potter stuff is not going to go away. But I feel like Nintendo could have a giant theme park on their own and it would be successful so i look yeah. forward to see seeing how this actually you know ends up and how it works out that's a thumbs up for me i think it's i think it's gonna be a guaranteed hit man yeah we're gonna I think have it's a to, can't uh, lose situation we might have to take a uh, play legit road trip to orlando man oh that would be fun man get the whole crew yeah man go to the uh mushroom kingdom in orlando and maybe even like harry potter and stuff down there too yeah, that would be pretty dope. So, um, yeah, so that's our thoughts on that. Did we Do we have a date at all? I don't think, I don't believe they said when they officially were going to announce the... It looked news. like I read something that said 2020, mm-hmm. but then I also read something that said 2024. I, th- I think they're opening the one in Japan first. Which would I would imagine would gotcha. be twenty twenty, and then following that, probably following to see how the success of that would be. Because you know, if they if they open in Japan, if it flops in Japan, it's not going to do anything in America, right? We might as well just assume that, uh, because I mean, the the way they consume these different properties, whether it's anime properties, Nintendo stuff, like if they're if if they're not going, if they're not buying it, then nobody's buying it. Uh, so I imagine they'll roll that out and then sometime at, soon after that, we'll see, we'll get a date then. So as soon as we find out the date when we're going to be able to, you know, check out the theme park, the Nintendo world theme park in the United States, we definitely will keep you guys up to date with that information. I want a review too. Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if we, if we can get the trip down there, we can do a whole nice montage video and all that stuff and then review it at the end. For you. I want to review every aspect of the theme park. I want to review the bathrooms. <laughs> I want to review the concession stand. I want re- <laughs> got to review the radish beer too, man. I'm telling you, they're making radish beer. <laughs> it is what it is. The Wario whiskey sounds a whole lot better. But you have to remember, though, do you want people drinking Wario whiskey than going to play Mario Kart? That might be kind of dangerous. Personally, I would like to see World Star videos of that, <laughs> <laughs> but I would not want to be a part with of the, it. No, with all of the all of the Goombas and everything in the background and stuff, and there's just people boxing. That's funny. Just getting up in the middle. You hit me with a red show, man. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Well, we'll see. We'll see how that works out. I imagine there will be alcohol, so uh, there's probably probably going to be some great videos coming out. What do y'all want to see at the theme park too? Let us know below, man. I'm excited about the theme park, and I want to know what you guys think too. So definitely let us know. Let's weigh in on it. Yeah, hit us up in the comments. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, if you have any cool, wacky ideas, what they can do there, we definitely want to hear that. Uh, any good ones, you know, we'll highlight on the show here. So. Hit us up. Let us know what you guys think. Um, With that said, we're just going to take a quick break so you can hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back. All right, and we're back. So, KJ, man, there's this new product that was just revealed. Um, So we're going to give our take on this. So it's from a company that everyone thought was dead. You know, Uh, the company that was doing so bad, they had to sell their prized possession or at least rent out, pimp out their prize possession to their once rival, Nintendo. Yes, 
Sega has revealed a new product and it's the Sega Game Gear Micro. So remember the Game Gear, the giant thing that you used to play back in the day that needed eight batteries and then those eight batteries would die after like two hours? That thing, it's coming back, but it's coming back smaller than ever, way smaller than the original one <laughs> with a screen that you could probably barely see, but it's coming in cool colors. KJ, man, what do you think about the Sega Game Gear Micro? A 1.15 inch screen display. Um, I, I did think initially that it was a troll because we even did, uh, there's a few, 8 bit troll a few years back where we took the N gauge and did a, a small version of the N gauge and was saying that the N gauge was coming back from Nokia. That was such, a, that was a failed console, by the way. That, that did so bad and it was awful too. It was not a good thing. But that was our joke was that it was coming back and not only was it coming back, but it was like bite size. So I was immediately thought, you know, that that was a joke because it was so small. And I saw like the guy's hand and you could see it kind of like real tiny on his hand. But no, this is this is a thing. And you can buy four of them uh, in Japan. Uh, it equates to $50 a piece for us if you were to buy uh, each one of them. They all come in different colors and each one has four games. So you kind of you can pick which one you want, or you can buy them all together. Uh, it's up. So Corey, what are you thinking, man? Uh, well, I'm thinking uh, this is a gimmick for one, just like how it was presented. Is like, and I know Japanese commercials are kind of zany, but I was looking at it. I'm like, dude, this is this can't be real. This is literally they're just trolling us. No one's gonna buy this. Um, but although it is clearly a gimmick. And although it is clearly a cash grab, like if, if anyone's saying this isn't a cash grab, I don't know. There's, there's, there's four games. I mean, I guess if you look at it in the grand scheme of things, you're getting four games on a micro device for $50. Uh, and then you're going to get a total of 16 games on four separate micro devices for 200 bucks. So one of them you're going to wait. We're looking at Sonic. Sonic 2, uh, we're looking at, uh, I think, uh, Gunstar Heroes. Um, there's some JRPGs on there. We're looking at, oh, so we're looking at about a lot of micro games that you could probably just play on an emulator. Not saying that's the right thing to do, but I'm saying that's probably yeah, a possibility. Yeah, I'm saying that's probably a possibility. <laughs> I've never, want... never done that before. <laughs> Never with Dragon Ball Z games that weren't available in America. <laughs> we all did it, man. Don't act like you didn't do it. <laughs> so I'm just so I'm just saying, like, it's clearly a cash grab. Um, so I'm disappointed that it's it's this is what we're getting because like we all kind of like we all are kind of rooting for Sega. Like Sega, we want you to come back. Like we we think you should have a console, you know? Uh and television's coming back with the Amico. They're getting all types of press. Uh, Atari's getting shat on, kind of, but they're coming back, you know, with their own their own console. Sega, like, Sega, you're not doing as good as Atari? I guess not. So, I mean, what I think is going to happen, though, this is, this is what I think is happening, right? Sega, they want to make a console. I imagine they're like, dude, how is Intellivision out here making a console and we don't even got a stinking console. We're freaking Sega. We got Sonic the Hedgehog. So they're probably, bring, they probably got together, schemed. They're like, hey, man, these little micro mini consoles are really selling. What if we, what if we make micro game gears that'll cost us $2 to make each and we'll load on two of our best selling games of all time and then a bunch of other games that people couldn't play in America uh, and sell them? for overpriced so we can make enough money to eventually build our own console to compete with at least in television and Atari. Um, so that's what I think it is. I think it's a cash grab so they can obtain enough funds because they're, they're too proud to ask people for a crowdsource or a crowdfund. Uh, so they're too proud. So they're using a cash grab and a gimmick to make money to be able to come back and compete. Maybe I'm well, wrong. Maybe they're just doing a cash grab and a gimmick to just do a cash grab and a gimmick, but I hope they're doing the cash grab and the gimmick so eventually they can roll out with their own console. 
Yeah, um, so, you know, the black comes with uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, Puyo Puyo 2, Outrun, and Royal Stone. The blue has Gunstar Heroes on it, Sonic Chaos, Sylvan Tail, Baku Baku, and then the yellow one comes with three Shining Force games, and then another game I haven't heard of before, Nazuyo Puyo, Oruru, Oruru. <laughs> I'm probably <laughs> saying, I know I'm going to get it, but at least I'm trying, hey, at least I'm trying. And then uh, Red Game Gear gives you revelations to Demon Slayer, Megagami Tensai, Gaiden. You get the GG Shinobi and Columns. So it is, It's it, this is weird for me because they they are some solid games on here, right? They they did. It's not like they picked trash. I mean, they picked some good games, but it's also Game Gear, man. Do we remember what happened to the Game Gear? So I'm that I remember that in the back of my head. I will say I do like that it does run on two AAA batteries, but that's not your only option. You can also charge it with the USB cable. So that that right there. I thought it was a pretty cool thing. So that's pretty cool. So you can, you know, you get that, you still get that old school feel if you want to use batteries, just, you know, just to take yourself down memory lane. I mean, it's not eight because it, you wouldn't be able to fit eight right. batteries. In. <laughs> yeah, eight <laughs> so, batteries is bigger than the device. <laughs> yeah, so that's not available. But, you know, they, they're giving folks that throwback feel. But with that being said, man, also, if you buy all four, for the $250 price point, they throw in the magnifying glass or the big window, and you put in that that magnifying glass, like like back in the day, slips on top of the game gear, and you can actually see it the way that it's, I guess, intended to be seen. So that is super cash grabby right there. Yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> We're going to make a 1.5 inch screen and then charge you 50 extra bucks if you want to see it a little bit bigger. I, I <laughs> like a, a I'm little a bit tough bigger. time, man. This this might do all right in Japan, but I, I don't know about right, I don't know here in America, man. I was looking at them, man. I was like, what are they selling? Keychains? And then they showed the games. I was like, oh, it's not keychains. I thought it was keychains. So like I don't know, two hundred bucks for all four. I mean, there are some good games. Sonic One and Two are, or you said it was uh, uh, the Chaos Emerald on the blue one. Yes. Sonic Chaos. So, okay. So, um, so I mean, those are good games. And then, you know, there's some JRPGs. So they have like long, like solid long games where you're going to have like a solid amount of gameplay. So it's not like games that you're just going to be done with in 15 minutes. So you got to give them credit for that. Um, but it still is just, it seems really cash grabby. And I don't think, I don't think in the States it'll do that well. Just based on how, and also like, you know, no, this isn't me taking shots at people in Japan or anything, but they're generally small people, right? They're generally like on average smaller than American people, right? So if it looks tiny in a <laughs> Japanese person's hand, all of a sudden, how I small? I ain't touching is. this one, man. You, <laughs> like, I don't know, man. I'm I'm trying to be as safe as I can while I say this, but I'm just saying, how small is it really? How I don't know. I have pretty big hands. I got hands, big man. hands. Yeah, I got too, big man. hands too, man. So I mean, I'm asking this question because if I'm gonna partake, I don't want to like be like, is are my thumbs gonna be too big? Like you know. So I mean, these are your thumbs will questions. cover the screen. You trying to play? <laughs> and... These are important questions, man. These these need to be asked, man. Because if I'm gonna spend two hundred bucks and then I flip it out, and I'm like, yeah, I can't even, I can't even hold this thing. Like, what am I gonna, what am I gonna do then? So, I don't know. I hope you get the funds that you need, Sega, for whatever your true intentions are. Um, maybe you A Dreamcast like, would have been nice. Just a, a Dreamcast re release. I would have taken that all day. All day. Like hotcakes. Give me Power Stone on it. And that's all. You could give me Bruh. a Dreamcast Mini with only Power Stone and I'd buy it. With only one game with just Power Stone and I would buy it. 
but then you have to think about the the massive catalog that was on Dreamcast. Come on, man. Come on, man. Sonic Adventure on there, dude. Vigilante 8, Second Offense, bro. Crazy Taxi. Crazy Taxi. So there's, I mean, the list goes on. The Dream, like, I don't know. Do they not have the rights to the games? Like, do they, do they not have enough control of their property to make these, you would think, softball pitch decisions? I, I don't know. Sega, hit us up. Let us know. I don't know. If you have a PR representative or something and you want to explain some stuff. I'm wondering, is this the start of something else that they have cooked up? Like, this was just a side piece to we have actually this is our main thing that we want you to buy. Because I kind of got that vibe that this is just an appetizer. I could be wrong. Maybe that's just what I want it to be. Mm. But I kind of got that vibe that that's what it is. Yeah, because, I mean, it's so left field, you know, the Game Gear. Like, I'm, this is going to be, like, the thing that I say on the show, I guess, now. Who asked for this? Who asked for the Game Gear? <laughs> like, no one We'll start asked. putting it on service. <laughs> Who asked for this? <laughs> Who asked for the Game Gear? Nobody asked for the Game Gear. I mean, maybe in, maybe in Japan they asked for the Game Gear, you know. And that's where it's releasing first. So maybe that's who it was. But I know I didn't ask for it. So I didn't ask for it when it came out the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Just being honest, I had a Game Boy. <laughs> we'll play these, these good games. Yeah, man. So, I mean, I, I mean, and, you know, they're actually thinking back on the Game Gear. They actually had some pretty good games. And there was color. It looked really good. It was just so heavy, and it took so much batteries, and the batteries somehow always found. And, and that Sonic out. the Hedgehog, that Sonic conversion is actually praised really highly. Like they did a great job converting that to Game Gear. So, yeah. yeah. All right, so man, let's move on into our final topic, which completely changed from what it was going to be because we were supposed to sit here and discuss some information some hard-hitting stuff that we wanted to uh to to talk about we've been talking about for a long time like can we see it can we see it what's going on with it but it has been delayed with no no explanation of when they're actually going to roll this out it's been delayed because of everything that has been going on in the country i imagine sony did not want their tech to be stolen uh like zoo animals have been being released and all this other stuff. So, I mean, if they're letting out, if they're letting out the zoo animals, there's lions in the streets of Chicago and tigers and bears, oh my, and people riding police horses. I'm sure Sony was like, yeah, we probably shouldn't have our top secret PS5 in any of these cities where people just don't care about stealing stuff. So um, the PS5 reveal has been postponed until who knows when. I am super disappointed. They teased us with the photo of the controller. It's like, dude, stop showing me the controller. I want to see the PS5, what's going on. And now we have to wait. But what do we want to see? What has to be, what has to be revealed when we see it? So how do you feel about this, KJ? And then let's get, start getting into what we want to see when we finally eventually get to see what the PS5 is. You know, it's funny you talked about the controller because I, I still have a lot of questions about the controller, just some of the things that you'll be able to initiate with the controller, what type of new programs are they going to have already built into the PS5 that the controller will interact with? I thought about what's the PlayStation Plus service going to look like on PlayStation 5. I'm sure that some type of controller interaction with the with the PlayStation Plus will happen. I'm, I'm sure that new features will come to PlayStation Plus on the PS5. Uh, I'm sure the free game thing will still be will still be going, and that'll be very welcomed on a new system to still have uh, free games. So I hope that they have that type of implementation. And I, but I am interested too, and I, I've left comments on different sites that that love Sony. Um, I left a comment, and I was just saying I'm really curious to see how the charge is going to last because there's so much going on with this controller and that's great. And I'm, and I'm really happy about that. That's going to be doing all the stuff. It's talking about the vibration and all that, 
But when you sit down, like, how long is that charge going to last, man? Yeah, man, that's, that's, I I don't. That's actually a great question. And, you know, we know the batteries they're going to use are going to use the lithium ion battery. So depending on how big the controller is, if it's around the same size as this, maybe they're going to use the same size battery. But I would say that would not be, they can't. They can't be using the same size battery. The battery has to be bigger. If it's going to be doing all of the extra functions that they're just, they're saying that it's going to be doing, there's no way they can put the same size battery in the controller. This is, uh, you know, the second controller I had for my PlayStation after my first one. The life, life cycle basically was almost up where it barely holds a charge unless I keep it plugged up completely all the time. Um, I mean, it's lasted quite a while, but it hasn't really, you know, to the point, not at the the level that I would want it to, especially with, you know, the cost of the controllers, you would think they would last a lot longer than they actually do. Um, so that's a really good question. That's something I would like to know. Uh, we're going to have to deep dive. Anybody out there, if you have the specs at all, throw those down in the comments below. What are the battery specs of Please, the DualShock yeah. 4? Because I definitely don't know. And if you have the specs of the, uh, the release specs or the alleged specs of the PS5 DualSense controller, we definitely want to take a look at that too, because yeah, they're going to have to put a new uh, bigger battery in there because it's not going to be able to do, you know, what they're saying it's going to do for long periods of time. If that is the case, you know, directional sensing and all this stuff rumbles in certain areas of the controller pinpoint. It's a lot. It seems like there's, there's some sort of chip inside of the, I would imagine a chip inside of the controller that's going to generate that there has to be some sort of neural network inside of the controller that's going to be able to trigger those things unless it's going to the PlayStation itself is going to do all of that uh but which also would kind of drain the battery a little bit more not having it directly on the controller itself so yeah the electric bill buddy so i mean it's it's one of those one of those questions that we need to get answered we'll definitely uh dig more into that uh, like I said, hit us up in the comments if you have any uh, anything you can input on that for us. Um, somebody, I got like no likes on it and seven dislikes. And then somebody said, well, you haven't thought that they will have some type of wireless charging functionality so that you. <laughs> what is it? How does that answer the question? I'm like, yo, I'm, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> They'll have wireless charging capability. Yeah, but. How is how long is that gonna last? Is the question right? <laughs> it's it's gonna, that's convenient. It's a blessing, but still doesn't answer my question. <laughs> right? How long is it gonna last? And I mean, that's a fair question. And how much? How much is the controller gonna cost? If I need right. to buy one, you know, like all of this comes into play. Like, we're adults, you know. I I ask questions sometimes. I need to know these things. I don't want to just be spending money on stuff than having to buy a new one in three months, and then I. I feel like I was overcharged for something that didn't last that long, you know? Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just frugal, but it's, we gotta, you got to think about this stuff, you know? Now, if, you know, you have your parents buying the stuff for you or whatever, and it doesn't matter, or, you know, people just will, someone will just buy it for you, then I would understand. But, I mean, when you have to pay for these things, these are the questions people need to ask, you know? Yeah. Um, because you don't want to be upset. You don't want to find yourself like four months down the line, like, oh, my controller is always dying. Why did I buy this piece of crap? And now you're mad because you didn't do research up front, you know? So, And, and this question, uh, this goes for Microsoft as well. I'm talking to y'all too. Both of y'all have been skipping and dodging and Floyd Mayweather in this like crazy. How much are these games going to cost? Are they going to be $59.99? Be and I, I'm kind of concerned because no one has come out and just straight up said hey it's going to cost 59.99 i've not seen a quote like that yet so i'm tended to believe that there's going to be some type of of price hike i would like to because we went two generations without one mm -hmm. so i'm hoping that we can get a third one but because i haven't heard any of these suits saying oh yeah it's gonna be 59.99 like the rest of them i haven't heard that yet Mm, remember the forty nine ninety nine days, man? Yeah, man. I remember when it boosted up to sixty, and I was disappointed when the PS three came out. I was like, "Sick! 
an extra ten dollars so i mean with the way inflation's going they might slap an extra dub on it bro we might be looking at eighty dollar games or at least eighty dollar triple a titles man and i'm like i don't know you see why indie game a lot bro i don't know how i feel about that i don't know man eighty dollar triple a titles so Hopefully that's not the case. My question, I like, the first thing I thought of, I was like, hmm, what question do I have? My question is, what does the freaking PS5 look like? We still haven't even seen the console. Like, that's what I want to see. Like, all of the features and all of that, yes, I want to see it. I want to see some live gay pl- gameplay demos as well. I want to I see them turn on the PS5, reveal to us the PS5, show us the console, walk over to it, hit the power button, let us hear the startup music, <laughs> load up a game, and then play for five minutes. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see happen. I feel Guess like what I... you're not going to see? <laughs> exactly. Any of that. <laughs> you're going to see some pre-recorded videos about some games that we already know are coming out, and then one announcement of non-gameplay at the end for something that you're looking forward to. That's going to come out in 2024? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> why do these things have to happen like this? I'm still, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the council, uh, council in general, but now we're like, Sony, you've been making us wait so long. And like, I, like, I understand everything that's going on right now, but I don't see how, especially where, where you could have just didn't did a remote event you know, and just I'm pretty sure that's what it was going to be anyway. So I don't understand how this even held it all up. Stop making us making us wait. Did something happen? And you're just blaming it on what's going on in the world because there's something going on behind the scenes where you had to postpone it and push it back. Uh, I've been watching this show called Mythic Quest on Apple TV Plus. It's about a game developing studio and something similar like that happened behind the scenes. So. Um, yeah, I want to put it past them. So who knows? I want to see the PS5. I want to see what it looks like. Is it going to be a black console? Is it going to be white like the controller? What's the design going to be? Is it going to be like what was leaked? I just want to see what it looks like. How much space am I going to have to clear to put it on my shelf? Let me know, Sony. I got a fridge with the Xbox. Now, hopefully the Sony looks like uh, an oven so that I can have like... <laughs> You know, the combination, the kitchen set going. Right. Yeah, you got to have the kitchenette appliances, you know, set up. Yeah. That's what's up, man. So, Sony, let us know. We want to know the price of the systems, of the system itself. We want to know the price of the games. We want to know what it looks like. We want to know the battery life of those controllers. Uh, and we also want to know the price of those controllers as well. Uh, price of PS Plus. Are you going to boost PS Plus? I think that Uh-oh. should say I think that should say at the fifty dollars that it is right now because honestly fifty dollars is kind of taxed. Um, like I hesitated to buy it and I was like I had an extra fifty bucks and I was well, like, well that money's going towards the party system, Corey. Well, it's it's like it's, they just get you, man. It's like you could get it for cheap if you just give us fifty bucks right now, or you're paying ten bucks a month. You're paying ten dollars a month. You're gonna end up paying way more. Just give me the fifty now. And I'm like, man, dude, just take the fifty bucks, man. <laughs> just leave me alone. Just take my money. Leave me alone for a year. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that doesn't increase too. Like, there's so many factors. There's so much that we we need to know um, that we thought we were gonna find out, but we didn't. And when will we? Who knows. Um, so hopefully maybe they just postpone it a week. Maybe they'll just drop something at the end of the week and they tell us, or maybe they completely, they do a completely different and just do a press release thing or something like that. Who knows? Sony, you're on the clock though. So, I mean, not on the clock of me potentially buying an Xbox, but on the clock of me just being upset with you. (laughs) So, man, he's speaking for himself. I want (laughs) this is what I want because Corey's a fanboy, but I'm gonna tell like it is. I want a system who's and the system's gonna have the best games. So, whichever one that is, 
that's who's getting the KJ's dollar bills. And that's what it is. <laughs> Man, I'll just I'll just invest in a PC and say, forget the console wars. I'll convert, that's fair. I'll convert to the master race. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I look diabolical when I did that. I probably didn't. I probably just look ridiculous. You, yeah, it was, it's the green headphones that kind of took away from that. But <laughs> Hey, man, they're, they're Razors, man. Razor, uh, hit us up, man. We want a deal. We'll do, we'll do a brand deal with you, Razor. We're both rocking them. Too. Otherwise, I'm putting duct tape on these things, man. <laughs> so, man, I definitely appreciate everybody tuning in. Before you guys go, though, we do want to make sure you guys check out playlegit.net. Because that's the home, that's the hub, that's where you're going to find everything legit when it comes to gaming and real talk. You're going to find original reviews, articles, the Play Legit podcast, a bunch of stuff, the 8-Bit Troll but from Gremlick. There's so much great content on playlegit.net. You're not going to want to miss out. Also, hit us up on social media. Follow us on Instagram, uh, Twitter. Subscribe to the YouTube channel where you're able to watch the show. Uh, and, and see our faces and see us interact and see my weird dances and things that I do on the camera from time to time. Uh, so you're going to want to subscribe there and su subscribe everywhere. Also, subscribe to us on iTunes as well as Spotify and check us out on anchor.fm because the audio format of the show is super do dope as well and it helps support us when you w listen to that too. So watch the show when we upload it on Thursdays, but then, you know, play it back uh, with the audio version as well, maybe you want to, you know, do some yard work. Maybe you're at work or something. You can't watch the, the visual version. Listen to us on iTunes. Listen to us on Spotify. We're available wherever podcasts can be found. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Before we get out of here, KJ, you got anything else you want to add? No. <laughs> I, thought, I was trying to come up with something. No, it was just hard. It was fire today, man. I got nothing else, man. Yeah, man. It was a great episode. We definitely appreciate everybody for tuning in. Hit us up in the comments. We want to hear from you guys. All right. If you have any questions, concerns, what do you want to hear from us on the Play Legit podcast? We're going to talk about it as long as you let us know about it. So until next time, guys, I've been Corey Elijah. Been here with KJ. What is that? Blade two? Yep. All right. That, yep. You got the best one. At first, uh, it was kind of blurry. I was like, dude, that's not Blade Trinity, is it? But I didn't see Ryan Reynolds, so good. No, I don't own that. I own one and two, though. All right, good. You got the good ones. That's what's up. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. It's been an awesome podcast. We will catch you again next week on the Play Legit podcast. Cue the awesome outro. Peace. We out. Word. Yeah.